Welcome back to another episode of Have Game Will Travel. I'm your host, uh, Bennett Newsome, aka Damn It Bennett, out there on the internet. Uh, so happy to have you here. Um, if you are brand new to the show, Have Game Will Travel, um, it's an interview style show that focuses on how there's so much more to esports, gaming, streaming, content creation, uh, and all of the things in between than being just good at a game. So we kind of take like a virtual trip through our guest journey uh, throughout the industry. Um, so if you do have questions, you can ask them in chat as we go. And we'll pull them up on stream and get them answered for you. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. We're going to introduce our guest today. He is the CEO and founder of XP League, uh, Jay Melamed. Come on in, buddy. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, dude. Uh, so let's let's get started here. Uh, obviously, tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and and what you do. Cool. Well, uh, first off, I just have to thank you for for inviting me on this. I've spent a lifelong dream to be on Have Game Will Travel since your first episode. I saw, you know, Matt on here and I was like, man, someday I'm going to on that show. So I, I appreciate the invite. <laughs> well, um, here we are, you know? <laughs> yeah, no. So, um, yeah. So my name is Jay Melamed. I'm the CEO and founder of XP League. Um, my um, my background really wasn't in esports. I have a, a background in the business world. Uh, I've owned a few businesses, sold a few businesses. Um, during the pandemic, um, you know, watching the uh, my kids. I've got four kids. Um, you know, so one of them was uh, in, in additional. So I've got you know just a, a crew running around my house <laughs> all the time. Um, and uh, during the start of the pandemic, we realized that. Uh, the kids weren't getting a lot of interaction with each other. Um, we had an opportunity to team up with a couple of other, um, we owned a coding center. And so we teamed up with some other coding centers to have these kids play and compete in Overwatch. And in a very quick uh, time period, we saw that, you know, it was actually really engaging. The kids had this great opportunity to connect. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, I, I saw it as I finally, I, the first time I saw esports for what they were and what they could be, uh, and how similar it was to traditional sports, and um, having been you know a parent of kids who game, not understanding, and you know growing up being a kid who loves video games too, not understanding that there's this like sports component to it, and then doing it myself, yeah. I realized that oh man, I can be a conduit for parents and for kids to participate in this if i could make it look and feel like conventional right. youth athletics and you know from that xp league was born and so um we ramped up and i had one of those like three o'clock in the morning sit up in your bed and i was like man i got an idea i need to <laughs> i need to get write this thing down um so i went and like you know typed out this crazy manifesto and from that i built out a, a business plan and we launched xp league and you know here we are today we've got um we have 50 locations uh we just signed our 50th location um we have just under 30 operating i think in our our uh, winter season that starts um you know around thanksgiving just after thanksgiving we'll have probably i think 32 or 33 locations participating That's so crazy. yeah dude it's gonna be uh it's it's gonna be great so so another that's kind of my background and how i got into this yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that's yeah. huge. That's that's really no, it is. Cool. It's, we actually just had uh, training here in Raleigh, our home office. Uh, you might know some of the folks that were here having a good time learning about oh, what yeah. we do and how we do it, so that they can bring it home and and rock it out. Well, that's awesome. So, would you classify yourself as as a gamer? Is this something that you've been doing for a while, or um, are you kind of getting into things later in life? Yeah, so, so I wouldn't say that. All right, I was like a. Uh, I would say as a kid, yeah. fully a gamer, right? Okay, like as cool. a kid, I mean, I like, you know, I had, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm old. So I had, uh, <laughs> I had, I had a, uh, an OG, uh, Commodore 64 Ooh, and okay. play things like play things like pole position. I actually, this is a good story and you'll, you'll understand this, but I, I don't think you'll know the, the toy that I'm talking about. There's a toy called photon. All right. And it was like laser tag. Okay. But it was like it was like the 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 budget laser tag. Okay. But the input for the like the headset and the gun was similar to like the pronged input that you plug a that you used to plug mouse uh, a mouse into uh into your Commodore 64. Okay. And being you know eight or nine years old, I was like, dude, I'm gonna plug this in here and see what it does. 
and I, and I, I broke my computer. Uh, <laughs> it, it totally like just fried the computer, uh, which was cool because then I got a Commodore 128 because my dad go. was uh, my dad was pretty cool like that. And so, you know, I, I played uh, a lot of computer video games that were like story type things, mm -hmm. pretty cheesy. Um, you know, you know, we'd we'd sneak away and play Leisure Suit Larry. Like, that was a big deal. <laughs> um, and then I, I got into Nintendo um, at a Super Nintendo, played that a bunch. And then, you know, when I got to high school, I really didn't play video games anymore. Um, I sold my computer because I wanted to get... Uh, I wanted to get speakers for my trunk and a, and, a, and I mm -hmm. wanted to get a sick amp. So I got these like, you know, clearly priorities were in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, <laughs> I just got this, like I got, I bought this, I bought this $500 Honda prelude and I <laughs> spent about $1,200 on some kickers and, you know, and an amp because I lived in South Florida. So my car had yeah. to rattle while I drive. Down of the course. Street. Um, you know, that's how you did it in, in uh, 1996. Um, but in, in college, my roommate was kind of big into games and got me back into computers. Yeah. Played a lot of Half Life, um, and he was really into it. But you know, I got, I, I played uh, Tony Hawk, but not really a big gamer. And um, it wasn't until recently, you know, I'd say it was right about around the pandemic stuff when when it started. Right. My son um, Zev Lobos, who's really into gaming. Uh, and you know, he's, he's a, uh, he's a, he's a, he's a professional Twitch streamer now too. He gets, he gets a couple, like couple dollars every month. I mean, he's big, Got big some deal. Subs, all right. <laughs> yeah. He's a big deal. Um, he and I started playing, uh, Warzone together and I really liked that game. And so we were playing on PS4 and, uh, I realized that I was getting killed by the mouse and keyboard people all the time <laughs> and it was pissing me off. So I bought a gaming, uh, laptop. Started playing keyboard and mouse, and you know, like every other person who ever starts playing a like a, a mouse and keyboard game and gets into it, first person shooter likes it. Yeah, uh, I had to get a better machine, I had to of get a better course. mouse and a better keyboard and upgrade. And then uh, I found Valorant and have like fallen in love with that game. It is the it is it is a love to hate game, um, but I have a really good time. So long story to tell you that I wouldn't. <laughs> I, I haven't always been a gamer per se but uh i i i love the lifestyle i love like the i mean i just love playing games now yeah. and i love what it is from what it means for my family and for my kids and absolutely it's a really great way to connect with them yeah and, and there's you know we've talked to a ton of guests about um kind of their journey in gaming and and, and coming up and then maybe there's breaks there's other things that they got involved in uh which which is always good because it sounds like you had other passions um you know for for different things which is which is good for me it was like music i had music and gaming it was always like a constant back and forth between those two things and you were you know pimping out your truck and that was great you know so <laughs> what would you say what would you say was like the first game that really caught you and was like this is a game that i love like this is the first game i've ever loved oh man um i played a so I had a Sega Genesis and I played Sonic when it first came out and I played that so much. <laughs> I mean, I just like the first Sonic on Sega Genesis was just, it was so great. Yeah. I just played, played the heck out of it. So I think that's like my, okay. yeah, my, and then, you know, but I'll tell you something funny. All my friends were really into football uh, and my dad's from Columbia. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, football is soccer and, and he's <laughs> really interested in, uh, you know, in the kind of football that we do. Right. So when my friends wanted to play football, I didn't know any of the rules. I didn't know what the hell was going on. But Tech Mobile on Nintendo oh, yeah. taught me everything that I needed to know about playing football. And so I learned everything I know about football and how to be a football fan <laughs> and like, you know, what what a down is all that stuff is from playing tech mobile yeah. so i love that game too i i feel like those are two great answers because a one who doesn't love sonic right and b i agree with you on a lot of those things there's a lot of different things that i've learned yeah. over the years from video games like when i went and did like uh you know driving for the first time i was like oh i like yeah. Grand Theft Auto, you know, like, like I mean, we've got this. <laughs> uh, that's that explains a lot. I've been yeah. in a car with you. <laughs> I am very bad in driving games now, though. Just for the record, I'm better on the road, uh, bad in driving games. 
fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. I actually tried a uh, an F one simulator, and that was I was really it, terrible. I was mean, it the one that like moved with you, like it, like as no, you because it wasn't that cool. Yeah, no, it wasn't that cool. It was, uh, but it did have um, it, it did have a like uh, Fantech like pressure steering column oh, so yeah. like it would you know it, it acted like it yeah no it was sick it was at uh at the formula one in miami and they oh, had yeah. the uh, formula the, the fan experience nice. um it's cool it's like this uh it was like a semi that they take like half the wall off of and <laughs> filled with um these little rigs that's awesome well yeah. let's talk you, you brought up your time in college and that was kind of a time that you kind of got back in into gaming so you you got a bachelor's degree in business at uh goucher college um talk to us uh about your time there yeah so goucher, goucher. okay my bad <laughs> but, but that's okay i you know it, it's uh, we call it, you know people call it goucher they call it uh goucher Ooh, um i like that better fancy yeah. um yeah no so I, I went to goucher uh it was um i followed a girl i wasn't really sure i was going to go to college um I wanted to, I see my, my big passion in high school at that time, instead of playing video games, I surfed, I surfed a lot. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so my goal was to uh, move to Costa Rica and open up a, uh, a ding repair shop on the beach and, you know, uh, work at like some board shop and, and right. that was going to be my, my life. And <laughs> uh, so then I met this, this girl uh, when I was traveling abroad, I was in Israel and she told me that I, I needed to go to college. And I was like, man, all right, fine. I'll go to college. <laughs> where should I go? I was like, where do you go? She's like, I go to Gatcher. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm gonna go there. <laughs> um, so being resourceful, I figured out I took a semester of uh, Palm Beach Community College, then transferred up to Goucher and, you know, followed her up there. But it was, um, it was cool. Good experience. And then, you know, I got my business degree at uh, UNC Kane and Flagler in, yeah. uh, in Chapel Hill. So you you mentioned obviously traveling there, uh, following a, a woman, right? And you talk about gaming at the same time. How did those two uh, worlds exist uh, for you while you were in college? Um. So, so, so just you know, to be clear, the girl that I followed to college is is my wife. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it, so it did work out. It was I didn't follow her, and she didn't break up with me like first semester. And then I was like, man, what the hell am I doing in Baltimore? Yeah, right. Um, and yeah, you know, she's also. She's the uh, chief brand officer for XP yeah. League, and we do a lot together. But um, so in college, you know, my gaming was pretty limited. I didn't have, I, I was actually broke uh, in college, so I couldn't even afford a computer. I had to, like, so for me to get on a computer, I had to go to a computer lab. Okay. My roommate had a computer, um, and he was obsessed with Half Life to the point where uh, we, all, we were on the swim team and we had to be at practice at like five in the morning. And I would, uh, there were, there was a couple of days where I would wake up and dude would still be there, like the grinding <laughs> it out on half life. And I'm like, Eric, dude, you got to get up. You got to, you got to get off that. We got to go to practice, man. Did you not sleep? Um, mm -hmm. And he, he hadn't, uh, but you know, it's, it's funny. I still give him a hard time about that. <laughs> um, then my, uh, you know, one of the guys on my hall got um, a PlayStation had Tony Hawk pro skater and I missed a couple of classes um, because of that. Yeah. <laughs> getting, getting stuck into uh tony hawk pro oh yeah that was that was that was the, you know that was the extent of my gaming in college and obviously you know you started really diving into the business side of things right so you landed yeah. an internship with bloomberg lp uh which pretty pretty big internship to land especially being your first one still as a student uh talk to us kind of about the process uh, uh for applying you know for an internship like that and and sure. what did you what, what did you do in that internship sure um cool yeah so bloomberg i was, I was studying finance and my school was a really small college right. and so the 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 business program was was relatively small um and a friend of mine had uh gone to work for bloomberg when when she graduated and Bloomberg at the time, Mike Bloomberg was when I was there, he had just announced that he was going to run for mayor of New York. So it was kind of interesting. So I got to see some of that while I was there. But um, from the financial aspect, uh, it was it was cool because it looked great on my resume. Right. And it was the first it was the first internship you know, that I had. And I was actually getting paid where all my other friends and you know, this goes this going back to 2000 uh, and nobody was getting paid for internships. Right. And so 
I was getting paid 500 bucks a week. So I was like, dude, I am tonning it. Like yeah. this is so <laughs> much money. Uh, but I was in Manhattan. And so I was spending like $800 a week. And so a guy who had no money going into this, never had a credit card before, somehow decided to get a credit card, ended up a credit card, leave you know, this one job that I finally get in finance in debt because uh, my roommate wanted to go out every night. And I was like, <laughs> dude, I can't, I can't, you know, so I'm eating hot dogs in the park for lunch and all this stuff because New York is just crazy expensive. But um, you know, getting an internship like that, I think a lot of times it's it's not so much what you know, but it's it's who you know, right. unfortunately. And, and you know, if you can, and, and not being afraid to ask for that, uh, for, you know, for that, that, that step up. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I, uh, I was, I was really interested in, um, in so boring, but I was really interested in, in, uh, in bond trading okay. and, um, my friend worked on the bonds desk. And so, uh, she got me in, uh, to, to do that. So I did research on, uh, on different types of, you know, different types of bonds and, and right. what was going on in that space. And it, it, it actually was really boring. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was a super boring job, um, but it, it's a cool place to work. It looked great right on my resume, especially yeah. since I was you know, initially going, thinking I was going to be like a Wall Street guy, which is not at all who I am. Right. <laughs> I like that though. And, you know, obviously this kind of started the progression of, of kind of where your career was headed. So you went after graduation, you moved into like financial services, um, and um, you know, from a fresh, you know, guy out of college, uh, kind of talk about your some of the roles that you had from, uh, you know, you were at TJ or T Row uh, Price in Maryland. Beer Price. Yep. Um, what were what were you doing over there? Uh, I worked in um, in the uh, financial services support. Uh, so it was. I graduated in 2002. The market was terrible. It was really hard to get a job. Yep. Um, so I was really stoked that uh, I got that opportunity. Uh, pretty low paying, but it was uh, it was a job. Um, and so I worked uh, an information desk and had to take my series uh, six and seven licenses. And you know, it do it's sort of like being a financial advisor, um, but they fed me what to say. Right. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a, a junior type person, but it was it was pretty depressing because the market was terrible. So you'd get phone calls every day from like these elderly folks who are like, why are my stocks not doing well? And it's like, well, it's because it's a time game and you don't have that much of it. So <laughs> um, the market's not good. You should have bought bonds. Right, um, right. But, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of funny like that. It, it, was, it was a good job though. Great opportunity. Um, but I was, I was there for a little while. And the fun part about it was the group that I was hired with, they hired you in a class. So I was hired with okay. like, uh, I think it's 15 other people or 16 of us total. And most of us were recent college grads, but there were some older folks in it too that were, you know, getting into the finance and right. maybe a business school had, had a business degree. And we, we did this class for 12 weeks so that we would you know, know everything that we needed to know to get on the floor and answer questions. And that was, that was super fun. Uh, that was, that was great, great experience. Probably one of the best work experiences I've, I've had. Um, and you know, again, I, I followed a girl to, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. So that's how I ended up in Raleigh and moved here in late 2002. Okay. And you obviously held uh, a lot of different jobs after, you know, working in the financial yeah. services, you from staffing manager to consulting to project management, um, kind of at that time during these types of, uh, you know, jobs were, was esports or gaming even on your radar or was this just something no, uh that not you, at all you weren't really paying attention to at the time yeah not, not at all i mean i was i uh, had no idea what was happening in, <laughs> in in the gaming world at that time i mean i was just focused on trying to um start a family figure out yeah. what my business was going to be um you know I, I it was interesting progression yeah i went from finance to consulting to uh consulting for construction companies to going to work for a construction company to founding yeah. a building science company yep. and then i ran that for a while and grew it built it uh sold it um and so you know really it wasn't it, it, the first time i had a gaming like so there were two like points where games came back into my life in that process one was um 
my father-in-law had just done a project for red storm entertainment okay and so he came home with a with a cd of uh this really cool game called rainbow six um and it was the it was the first oh, one yeah. it was the uh you know the original tom Clancy rainbow six uh and i played the hell out of that game that was a lot of fun you know it's like it you would it, i have no idea how similar it, i mean it's not similar at all to like siege or See, well like they that, added but, the multiplayer in now so apparently so i'm told uh yeah. but yeah, it so, does, yeah. Definitely so I mean, there was there was there was no <laughs> there was no multiplayer on this one. It was like you were just essentially laying out paths and you're like, go code alpha, you know, yeah. and like sending guys in. It was, it was cool. Uh, so I played that a bit, and then you know, fast forward when Eva, my wife, was pregnant. Um, I don't know why I thought that I would have more time, and I finally bought myself what I'd wanted for years, I bought myself a PlayStation. So I bought a, a, a PS2 or maybe it was a PS3. I can't remember what, what it was at the time. Uh, and I bought, you know, GTA. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it was four, um, which GTA would have been in 2008. Uh, maybe Vice City. It was Vice City. Yeah, you're right. It was Vice City. So I bought that and then I played that uh, a lot. And then the kids came and I don't think I touched my PlayStation again <laughs> for a really long time and ended up like uh, selling it to somebody or, you know, I think right. I sold, sold it or gave it away. Um, and, you know, fast forward, my kids get a Wii. I play on the Wii with them. That's fun. I, I wasn't, I might, Zev will still tell you to this day, the Wii is the best console ever. Uh, I, I, I wasn't really into you know, it. Uh, it's not a lot of fun for me. If, if it, I feel like we had uh, kind of that great honor of growing up with a console generation, and every year it just got better. You know, like, oh my God, the graphics of this one is insane. Like, yeah. you would lose your mind because, uh, exactly. like, and this shows 16 up here. bits to 32, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Or, like, when, uh, when, when uh, uh, Goldeneye came out, yeah. you know, yeah, oh yeah. We, we, I was, I was at summer camp. I was a camp counselor that summer. Um, and one of the kids uh, who was a counselor with me brought his console. And I mean, I guess it was N64. He said 64, yeah. yeah. And uh, he set it up with this, you know, with, with Goldeneye. And I think we would play that for, it was like, Endless. you know, oh, you guys want to go into town and, and like hang out or do stuff? Like, no, 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 dude, we're going to like... <laughs> We're we're going into uh into the the so the cook had like a a, a room with you know air conditioning and a TV and right. so we go into the, the the cook's room, uh, the camp like the camp uh food prep person and so we just hang out in in her place to play Goldeneye for hours so that was a lot of fun, yeah. But anyway, so so we got the Wii. It was cool, um, I guess. And then uh, Zev was probably six or seven. And I really wanted to like try Call of Duty and somebody I worked with let me borrow their um, Xbox 365 with Call of Duty. <laughs> and so I was playing it and Zeb was playing it and Eva saw and did not think it was appropriate <laughs> for his age. Uh, and so we gave that back to my friend John yeah. uh, and didn't play it anymore. And then, you know, eventually... The kids wanted a, a a better system, so we bought a you know PlayStation. Um, we bought a PS4, and then we played some Fortnite. My kids still make fun of me from the first time we played Fortnite. Uh, yeah, I was I was I just figured out how to like crouch, and I was like sneaking <laughs> up, and I. I you know, you're talking to your kids, so you say yeah. funny things. So I was like, "Uh oh, daddy's coming to get you!" <laughs> and literally, like they still make that joke. Like you know, it's still like. You remember that time when you were crashing? You're like, "Daddy's coming to get you." That's so weird. Like, yeah, hey, and the, the most important part is that you're building memories. You know, like uh, the, absolutely. <laughs> the joke it, may that, be on you, but memories yeah. are being made. You know, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 essentially what my entire. I mean, that that's my world in esports. It's yeah. about building relationships with kids and you know for kids and an opportunity and a vehicle for parents to connect with their kids where they are i mean yeah. these are the things that i find really special about what i do in esports um and what i think translates really well to every parent because 
you know, your kids are playing video games, yeah. whether you, you want them to or not, or you think screen time, no matter what your opinion is on it, your yeah. kids are playing video games. Um, and so building a structured environment around it so that they can, you know, so that the parents can kind of participate. We, we, we stream our matches so that parents can watch their kids play. It brings them into, you know, we, I always, when I'm explaining what we do, I always talk about it as like, those are our bleachers, right? right. Twitch is our bleachers. Um, so, you know, you have that parent who comes in and watches their first Fortnite match and their kid playing has no idea what's going on. But after a few months is like, you know, starting to scream about, you know, making sure they grab that loot box or, you know, <laughs> they're running out of mats. Um, so it's, it's a fun progression to see. Yeah. And, and I think that's the most important part is the kids are going to play that anyway. Like they're going to uh, do that sure. without sometimes without permission, you know, like, so if, if there, if there's a connection to be had and a way for parents to come in and, and, and be part of that, I think it's such a, a great opportunity. Um, you know, my folks, uh, do it with, uh, you know, uh, my niece and nephew. And, and that's like the coolest thing for me is like thinking and like, Oh man, they're playing. We, they're having a good time. Uh, I, my dad, I, you know, I'd send him my PS4 and, him and uh, uh and my nephew will play you know madden or, or, or nhl or whatever and they and they have a blast and i think that's such a yeah. good and important piece of like building that relationship from a like a grandparent to uh you know a grandchild or a mom and dad to their kids like however that may be um yeah, for sure. you know br bridging that gap is, is just such, such an important piece and and the video game is just the easy part you know like that's that's where it, it can be a lot of fun and they're already interested in it so uh, yeah, you, you kind of get a win there, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And um, you know, it's 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 kind of pervasive too. You get into it, and then you start finding your place in it. And that's 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 where I'm at now, right? Yeah. So I started like playing because I wanted to connect with my kid on the games that he was playing on, uh, and you know, and and now I've you know I'm I have this love for for Valorant. I mean, it's the first game that you know esport that I, I'll actually. You know, on my own without Zev, I'll watch. Yeah, the, I watched VCT. I watched uh, uh, some of the uh, game changers today, um, which, by the way, I think is so cool that Riot did that. I'm such a fan yeah. of, uh, of of game changers and, and just the whole model behind of getting um, more women in gaming. Yeah. Um, so it's it's super cool, and you know, you build your relationship with it so much so that now, like now, you know, as a joke, I put my my Twitch behind me, so I'm plugging it. <laughs> uh, I I told Jacob that I was going to come on here and I was only going to talk about any question you asked me. I was only going to answer. Uh, oh yeah, Twitch.tv CEO. Yeah. Um, but you know, as kind of a side project for fun, uh, I thought, hey, what would it be like if I, somebody who is in esports on the business side, yeah. um, working and building this business, building structured uh, environment for kids in esports, got a coach and started streaming my practices and my lessons and you know my gameplay and see you know what what is what is coaching and what is a structured environment of practice and kind of putting some some uh framework around yeah. the game what will it do for an old dude yeah and man it's great it's it's it's, it's a blast i love it I actually yeah i think it's funny because i i raided you the other day after you did. Uh, my stream was ended. Did. i didn't know i didn't know that you had started this uh you know thing where you you have a valorant coach and, and you're going through different things on stream and uh it was it was actually really fun to watch uh you know kind of uh <laughs> you explaining uh, like oh this is Bennett, you know and then yeah. uh, him trying to still coach you on uh, yeah, what no. was happening in the game and it was it was really fun so i'm, I'm glad uh, it, that you're it, putting that out it, there it, right it gives me so I, I have so much respect for like <laughs> you and for Zev and for like people who can do a lot of things at once, because I will tell you when I'm playing, if somebody's talking to me in the chat, I I can't, dude, I can't do that. I can't look. Yeah. I'm I'm so confused. I I my coach makes fun of me because I in Valorant, you know, he he mentioned to me the other day. You know, you can buy and move at the same time <laughs> right <laughs> so like during the buy phase i'm just frozen i'm like okay i want this gun and i want <laughs> my shields standing still uh, yeah and then i'll go and he's like dude you got to move faster you got to go set your uh you got to set your stuff up so anyway but it's uh yeah dude i appreciate you stopping in and, and watching it's so funny because yeah i i played well when you were there for a second yeah no you do yeah like, you had a couple like a couple kills yeah, yeah you had a nice little clippable moment i liked it it was great I did. I clipped it because it was it was funny because I was saying I can't walk and chew gum, and, <laughs> right. I, and I got those two kills. Uh, well, 
I don't want to gloss over a big part of your your journey and your career uh, because obviously you know this is an esports show. We're talking about esports, um, and yep. we're going to get up to to a lot of the the bulk of of what you guys are doing now. But I think it's important to kind of talk about the the you know kind of business as you were growing uh, these different businesses. So um, in 2005, you became the manager of business development for Prime Building Company, uh, which yeah. was like a leader in the commercial construction. Um, you were there for like eight years. Um, and um, obviously you can, you can tell us a little bit about the, you know, the company and all of that and, and what you were doing. Uh, but I think more importantly, kind of what valuable lessons did you learn um, that maybe have transitioned over into, into what you're doing today from, from those eight years? Yeah, so so uh, the background there is um, I was working in construction and I, I learned quite a bit. I'd done some consulting on the business side of cons uh, construction for um, a software developer. And my father-in-law uh, owned Prime Building Company and they were like a, doing great things in Raleigh. But, you know, it was, it was back in the in the old days where there were not a million different general contractors in Raleigh. So he was, he was a pretty big fish in a small pond. Um, and he said, Hey, you know, you, you like instruction, you're doing great. Why don't you come work for me? So I did. Um, and you know, that was, it was a great experience. And what I learned there that I've kind of taken with me and everything I've done is just how to, he, he's, he's a really, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. He's been a mentor to me, uh, on the business side, but, you know, and, and also you know, he's, he's been like a dad to me, my, right. for, you know, my dad passed when I was really young. So he's, he was really instrumental in like helping me become an adult and right. grown up. And, um, the things that I learned from him and, and working under him was how to be, uh, the CEO that I am now and the CEO that I was in my other companies and the things that I've done in the way that I interact with people, um, both, you know, my employees, my customers, like just being real and being approachable and being accessible right. and, um, always, you know, acting and, you know, interacting with integrity and with heart and, um, you know, he, he would do things that, um, just really humanized kind of the roles and, yeah. and did things for his employees that I was always really impressed with. And I was like, man, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And so in construction, I mean, a lot of times it's, it, it's, it can, it can be a kind of a weird, good old boys club mm -hmm. and he is anything but that. And it, uh, it was, it, that actually was what made him successful was he was able to go and, and kind of like not be the guy with the, you know, the golden retriever and the pickup truck and <laughs> could actually like, you know, he, he, he came in with uh, clean boots on. Um, so I've, I've always kind of taken a lot of that with me on, you know, how to, how to treat people and how to remember, you know, just interact with, um, yeah. your, your team and, and, uh, make sure that you always realize that they're, they're people just like you are and they have issues and they've got things going on and, um, being reasonable on expectations and that sort of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, and I think that's good. I mean, uh, you obviously want to set that stage right for, for you and, and, and how you run your companies and things like that, which I, I sure. you know, I'd assume would lead into founding, um, the, the prime energy group, which was kind of yeah. the next part of your journey there was you, you, you built this. Tell us a little bit about prime and energy group. Yeah. So one of the things that I did at prime building company is, uh, you know, this was back when people were just now like doing things sustainably, uh, right. was a fad, right? So it was, it was green and everybody's like, you know, green mm -hmm. buildings, a fad. So I was one of the first people in North Carolina to become a, you know, us GBC United States green building council, um certified professional and i wanted to bring sustainable building to prime energy or to prime building company and one of the things that i got really interested in was energy efficiency and i yeah. realized like that's that's like that's what matters right you can talk about green and like until you're blowing the face like yeah. oh we have cork floors and we have you know this other fun green stuff but it really doesn't it, 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 it's nice and people like to talk about it but what really matters is you know the 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 energy usage of the building i mean long term that's what affects our climate and what right. affects all those things the most. And so if you want to build something sustainably, it's understanding what the uh, energy usage of that building is and how can you minimize that and how can you minimize their, your, 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 your footprint. Um, so the, uh, the, the quickest answer on that is insulation and the way that you build the envelope. And so being kind of 
a bit of a nerd. Uh, spent a lot of time researching, figuring out, you know, what what makes a building energy efficient? What's the best way to do it? And that led me to wanting to start my own business. Uh, I partnered with my father-in-law and I worked two jobs for a long time. I was still uh, working at Prime uh, Building Company doing biz dev and, and project management while I was kicking off Prime Energy Group. Um, ended up going to business school at the same time, ended up having triplets at the same time. It was <laughs> 2008 uh, through 2012 was a crazy time. Um, and, you know, we built it up. It was the largest, um, Isonine was one of the products that we used. We were the license, largest Isonine, uh, private uh, Isonine dealers in, in the country, won all kinds uh-huh. of awards for it. Um, and it was cool. And and the truth is, is like the things I learned working for my, for my father-in-law were the things that made me successful there. It was, I approached it differently. I yeah. approached it from, you know, I wasn't an insulation contractor. And no, you'll never hear me say I was an insulation contractor. I had an insulation business. I mean, it was a building science company. And, you know, we were, we were an energy, efficient, uh, energy efficiency consulting company. Yeah. We used insulation as one of the products to yeah, get, for sure. we were selling you, but that was just the product. Um, so, you know, that was fun. It grew. And then I ended up selling that um, to a large um, consolidator install building products. They're a publicly traded um, building in like services right. consolidator. They own anything from uh, installation companies to uh, glass and mirror garage doors. I mean, anything that goes in your house, these dudes like own a business that yeah, does that. That's cool. So, yeah, it, it was cool. I learned a lot um, in, in doing that because taking a business through an acquisition um, is a hell of a learning experience. Yeah. Um, you learn, you know, you, you get to really appreciate the value of what you put together. Yeah. Um, and then I ended up staying on with them for five years running uh, my brand as well as uh, about five other different brands that we acquired while I was there. I helped on the M&A side of it, integrating them into the company. And I mean, it was cool. It was great. I mean, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun for the first few years. It did get old. Yep. Um, <laughs> and being, you know, being kind of an entrepreneur, you get, you get antsy uh, and want to do something different. And that's when, you know, we started talking about this XP League thing. Yeah. So tell, so, uh, tell me this, because I, I know that we have, um, you know, a lot of students at Full Sail that are in that world of entrepreneurial, you know, business and, and they want to, f- you know, be a founder of their, their company. What, what were some of the early kind of, um, you know, challenges or pitfalls of, of, of founding your own company? So it's the, uh, the biggest challenges you have as an entrepreneur is um, the emotional roller coaster that you go through yeah. because uh it's it's gonna happen i mean there are days you're gonna wake up and you're gonna be like man dude i am on top of the world my idea is so good and i've got such a great plan and i'm gonna kill it yep. and then you'll wake up one morning and you're like what the hell am i doing <laughs> uh why don't i just go get a job this sucks nobody's gonna believe in me um and so uh, my advice is if if you've got that entrepreneurial itch and you have something you have to you, you got to stick to it and know that you're going to go through these ups and downs. And um, I was a part of a group um, called, uh, it was an entrepreneur's organization. It used to be a young entrepreneur's organization. And they put you in a kind of a team with some other guys so you can commiserate about what it's like. Because they say it's lonely you know, as an entrepreneur. When you're the boss, it's hard to talk to. You know, if, if your spouse is in the business, it's easier to communicate about that, but sometimes you're afraid to communicate things. Like if you're scared, you don't want to tell yeah. your spouse that you're scared. Um, you don't want to tell your employees that you're scared. Um, so having this like group of people to chat with who are in a similar situation was really, I mean, really great. And one of the things that I learned there that is important for everyone to know, no matter what you're doing, is imposter syndrome. Yep. Like. I don't care who you are and what you've done. At some point you look in the mirror and you say to yourself, dude, what are, how did you end up here? You don't yeah. know anything. <laughs> like, dude, there's like, you know, like this is, why are they letting me do this? Like yeah. who is like, people are going to pay me to do something. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I don't belong here. Everyone feels that. Everyone. And it's, it's hearing other people that are successful and have built businesses and have done these great things. Say it to me um validated yeah you know my feelings and and made me realize that like okay cool Every, everybody feels this it's not yeah. just i'm not crazy um and you know maybe i do belong so 
Yeah, yeah quite, I, quite, I couldn't quite agree that. with you more. I think that's the best advice because everybody does go through it, and it's such a, um, it's easy to be defeated by that, you know. Oh, for sure, for sure. And 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 you know, the the other thing I'll say is is this, um, for you know the students at at Full Sail, and if they are interested in doing something on their own and building a business. It's all about coming up with a way to execute on it. You have to have a plan because, you know, like I always hear things about like, hey, I want to talk to this venture capital. I want to talk to them because I have a great idea. Ideas don't mean anything. It's plans. You don't, nobody pays you for your ideas. People pay you for the plan to execute on that idea. Um, yeah, I, I have a, a friend who's um, been in the venture capital world and I, when I was talking about what we're doing with XP League, I was like, man, what should I, should I like, I don't want to talk to people about this. I should put, a, put an NDA together and like be real secretive about it. He's like, no, so just have conversations, man. Don't make it complicated because yeah. you know what? If your idea and your plan is good, you'll do it before they do. And you have a plan, you know, they're not going to like, it, it, yeah. it, it, you have to make that different because someday you're going to tell people what you're doing and it's not going to be a secret anymore. And if they can figure out how to get there as fast as you, then you didn't plan well enough and you didn't differentiate yourself. So don't be afraid to have the conversation. Yeah. So um, I always thought that was, a, that was a pretty good piece of advice. Yeah, no, great, great advice. And I think that can help you formalize that plan, right? Like, okay, I need to really dive exactly. into this. I need to focus yeah. more on on this than the, the idea. And I know a lot of people get stuck in that idea world and they just want to keep iterating on the idea and make it better yeah. and better and better, but they forget how to get there, how to execute, like you said. Yeah. So uh, that's great. Well, speaking of executing, you know, you guys launched in 2020, um, yeah. which obviously was a crazy time already. Um, uh, you gave a little bit of an intro at the beginning, but I, I feel like a, another one here is always important. T talk to us uh, a little bit about XP League and, and, and what that entails for those that don't know. Cool. Um, XP League is a youth esports organization for kids age seven to seventeen. Um, we are a structured values based uh, program where we take esports and competitive gaming and um, put it into a framework similar uh, and easy to follow and understand, um, like conventional sports, so that it's easy for parents and you know mom and dad to, to get involved and, and see what you're doing and not look at it as more team uh, screen time, but look at it as structured screen time. Um, we ensure that like when we're working with our kids and we're building out the curriculum that we do, it's, you know, it's about the gaming, but it really it's about building sportsmanship values and building life skills and building um, friendships and confidence and all these, you know, there's just so many great stories um, of the experiences that I've had with the kids involved in XP league. And, you know, we've only been doing it for two years yeah. and I've seen, I, I, I've seen amazing things uh, and results on like these kids who have just really grown as, as people. And that's, yeah. that's what it's about. Um, it's a franchise brand. So uh, for those entrepreneurs out there that are interested in esports. If you uh, if you can't find a job in esports, I've got one that you can uh, you know you can you can start your own be your own boss, uh, open an XP league. Um, it's super rewarding yeah. in the interactions that you have with the kids. Um, yes, I mean that's that's essentially like the framework of it. Uh, it's year round. We have seasons uh, similar to other uh, athletic programs, yeah. and. We have our North American Finals, which is our large in-person tournament that we do once a year. Uh, last year in June of 2022, it was at the beautiful Full Sail University and the live on uh, Full Sail Live, as well as the I want to say it right, the Orlando Health Full Sail Fortress. Close, close. Full Sail Orlando. The full Sail University Orlando Health Orlando. Fortress. Okay, sorry. It's the full. I tried. I tried. I tried. You did great. I I, I liked it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So and it was you know I mean obviously you know you were there but for those that weren't um it was phenomenal. I mean it was just such a blast. We had forty eight teams there. Um. I think I've I think uh, Sarah told me that it was the largest esports uh, event ever on campus. Yep. Um. We had you know. 200 kids, 220 kids competing, and about a thousand people there. We had to, you know, we had the fire marshal redirecting people away from live. And, yeah. um, and we've hosted was, things like MLG, uh, you know, tournaments for Call of Duty. Uh, we've hosted things for 
Halo on campus. I mean, we, we've done a lot of esports events over the years, dating back to like 2011. And this was the largest. I mean, it was in both both venues, which is pretty crazy. It was. And, and you know, working with the Full Sail students um, was an absolute pleasure. They are so professional. You... It, it, they just made it so easy. I mean, the year before we had, we did it in, in Raleigh uh, and we were really lucky in the sense that um, Full Sail sent up a couple of students um, and, and, and Jacob came up with them um, and it, it, having them there that year was critical. I mean, they really filled out some of the things that we didn't know what we were doing. Um, so that was cool. And then, you know, obviously getting the opportunity to, to do it. <laughs> Um, we actually, you know, we were talking about this the other day, Jacob, when he was here for, uh, North American finals in Raleigh, um, uh, which is, we were in the same building that they just had the big, uh, Fortnite invitational mm -hmm. and where HDS kicked off, uh, last year. Um, I remember, you know, we were talking about this. He, he walked out to me and he said, next year, you're going to do it full sale. Yeah. I was like, all right, cool, man. Sounds good. Yeah, uh, you like, know, just kind of like, <laughs> like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like this guy, you know, I just, you know, sure. Yeah, of course. We'll do it there. That sounds great. No, no, seriously. You like, you have to come to Orlando and look at it. You're, you're going to, you're going to do it in Orlando. I was like, all right, cool. So in 2023, we're doing an Orlando full sale again. I'm so, so excited. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's, it's, it's going to be a blast. We're going bigger. We're going for more kids. Um, I got to figure out how to fit more computers in there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Got so, a good job for you to figure out. And I feel like this is, it is perfect like segue to this question is as the co-founder and CEO of XP League, what is a day of life of it, it, it consist of? Like, what is it for you? Uh, is it figuring out how to get more computers? In the yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's, 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 it's a lot of things. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's selling to uh, potential owners, like explaining yeah. what we do, educating them on, on what we do and why it's a good business model. It's building partnerships with, um, pro orgs, colleges, um, OEMs, um, just other partners to, to work with and interact with. It's making sure that our um, operations are running smoothly, that we've got things planned out for next season. Yep. Um, it's talking to uh, you know, publishers and, and making sure that we have enough codes for um, Apex Legends this right. next season coming up. You know, it's, it's, it's doing all of those things. Um, and it's you know, looking at strategic planning and figuring out, okay, well, what's next? Where do we want to be? What do we want to be doing? And kind yeah. of building those things out. Um, and sometimes it's, uh, it's as simple as, uh, you know, getting to hang out and play with kids. Um, you know, so, you know, I, that's, that's one of the things that I always make sure I take time to do yeah. is interact and be a part of it. So every once in a while I'll get on and cast a game, um i'll you know hang out and play um with some of the kids I actually uh subbed in on a game once and you know you're not allowed to play an xp league if you're not in the age range you're right. certainly not allowed to sub in as as an like like you know an adult or something <laughs> on the team uh they made the exception for me i'm <laughs> so bad uh that you know the other team was like oh yeah Oh yeah, you can have Jay in there. Like, yeah. oh, go ahead. You, yeah, you can put you Giga guys actually take him. <laughs> yeah, it's no big deal. Giga Death can sub in. You know, we'd rather do that than do uh four v five. Um, so uh, you know, I think I had two kills that game. Um, but it's yeah, you know, it it's it's so, it's just so much fun, man. It's just so much fun. And I feel like for for you guys, it's kind of almost like plug and play. I mean, I think the hardest. Thing that most people, especially from a middle school or high school uh, esports uh, program, is concerned is like, who do we play? Like, how, yeah, what, okay, we got some kids that are interested. Now, where do we go? And with XP League, you already have this built-in network of uh, of a league there, right? So you yeah. you pop up shop and you're right in it. You have you have your kids, and then they play yeah. everybody from the league, which I I think is such a great idea, and and the fact that you've already got you know. Uh, a total of 50, uh, 30 currently active and 50 uh, coming is, is pretty, uh, pretty insane and exciting. It so. is. It's, it's, it's super cool. And it, you, you, I mean, you said it, the whole business model is based on the idea that it's turnkey, right? Yeah. So um, we want to make it as easy as possible for the community to participate in esports. So that means, um, you know, in a mobile model, we've got, you know, they play on laptops. And, yeah. um, you know, so if we want to turn, 
the parks and recs department into an arena we just pop up an arena at parks and recs if they yeah. want to do it at a uh, at a private school or at a, uh, at a community college or, or whatever they don't Wherever. have a facility you just pop up an arena and you know you've got you've got uh that's the real have game will travel right, right. i mean exactly I, yeah it's, it's uh have laptops will travel <laughs> uh, um so we uh we just we, we pop up our arenas wherever we need sometimes they play out of lands and some of our locations have actually set up um brick and mortar shops but yeah. You know, the idea there is um, looking at the, the community and helping them where they need it, uh, you know, being that non-scholastic piece um, allows for us to control it a little bit better in terms of the games that we play, how we play them. And it also really allows for us to um, control the coaching side of it and the structure there. I mean, we, we built our own coach certification program. So through a partnership with the Positive Coaching Alliance, um, we take in their certification, uh, mixed in some esports coaching from uh, a professional esports coach. Uh, he, he's built curriculum for uh, pro orgs, yeah. um, and so work together to create something that is, you know, a, a really great program. And so our coaches all have these certifications, um, and you know, build it out. Oh. Uh, there, there's a question in the chat. Oh, is there a question? Okay, let's let's. Uh... <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, we're, it's, we're it's, doing it. <laughs> it's Jacob. Jacob wants to know what CEO grind is. Well, Jacob, uh, I'll tell you. CEO grind is uh, is my Twitch channel that everyone should go check out and and uh, and follow. You don't need to subscribe. It's cool. Just follow. Just follow. <laughs> um, I, I don't need to. I'm not monetizing it. I just want you to watch me play video games. You know, that's 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 all I care about. So, uh, <laughs> so come on and come on and follow me, and you get to you know make fun of me while I. Uh, while I try to learn how to play Valorant. You just got to raid him while he's playing Valorant. He'll do great. That's the key. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Show up with 40 people um, and and I'll, I will I will just pop off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I did. I was reading a couple headlines, um, you know, obviously about XP League doing doing the research for the show. And um, since you started XP League, you've you've kind of racked up some pretty great titles and partnerships uh, i mean obviously the one that what sticks out is like the first and largest esports franchise in north america that's like a huge you know accolade uh that you get you know you guys are starting that right and uh you now have partnered with dark zero esports um talk to us a little bit about that partnership yeah so um i've been friends with uh the one of the um owners of, of dark secrets owned by a uh, private equity group and uh he was the ceo he's actually stepped into a chairman role um and we've we've talked about this for a long time of, of doing something together yeah. and i have this vision of an official like I, I hate saying the word little league but it's what people resonate with yeah. um and you know because little league is that's a brand it's right league, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. That, that's trademarked um but it, it, it this, this idea that when you go and you play Little League or you play Pop Warner football, you don't go and play on like, you know, the the Orlando, uh, I don't know, shoe polish. I'm just <laughs> That'd be a weird team name. I don't know where the hell that came from. But anyway, <laughs> you play on like a team, right? So yeah. you go play for like the Orlando Giants or yeah. the Orlando Chiefs or Dolphins or whatever. Um it, that doesn't exist in, in esports. And I want to build that, right? So um you know, they kind of saw the same vision that I have. And we actually have a few more orgs we're about to announce. Um, there'll be a press release next week. We're doing stuff with Parabellum. Um, we have some other orgs that um, we're kind of finalizing some some agreements with. And, and they vary on how yeah. structured it is. Like mm -hmm. some are more structured than the other than, than others on, you know, meet and greets or coaching or right. helping with curriculum or, you know, with Parabellum, we're doing some academy stuff. I mean, it's going to be really, really cool. Um, but you know, at the very low level, the vision is to have enough pro orgs so that our kids in the regions where those pro teams are will wear the jerseys and have the name of that team. So yeah. um, right now, I mean, we have the permission to do it with a few teams, Dark Zero being one of it. Um, we could, we will have an XP League Dark Zero team on grouping. So that could be from, you know, if you have a really strong team and you're, you're the franchise owner and you want to call them dark zero and have them wear dark zero jerseys yeah. you know, we can do that and so That's we'll awesome. be able to do that with a bunch of other uh teams yeah and so my goal is to get to the point where we have enough orgs bought into that with us and sharing that vision so that our platinum level of elite players which is about 
you know, probably 15% of all of XP League kids yep. will have, you know, an interaction with, with one of those teams That's as, cool. uh, yeah, it's kind of like a junior league, you know, junior yeah. team. And I feel like there's a win for both, right? Like, yeah, no, it's huge. Like, esports huge. orgs are like getting to interact with the, the future Absolutely. Of, of esports, you know, as in, in the youth. And, and then obviously the kids who are floored to meet, you know, some, some pro, like that's, that's going to yeah. be really neat. It's, um, it, it's, it's so cool. You know, when you think about what we do and it, it, well, here, here's the thing about esports, right? So esports is a bit different than, than other pro sports, because in most cases, people like the org, uh, because of who plays on the yeah. team. It's a back of the jersey, not front of the jersey. And you know, this is a fandom conversation that I've had with a lot of people. Um, I actually had a really great conversation uh, probably about a year and a half ago with Adam Reimer uh, when he was at Optic yep. about the fandom problem in esports and how to fix that. And you know, we talked about the, the the things that made us fans of the teams that we followed when we were kids and and why we were lifelong fans. And it's it's that it's it's a, some sort of connection. You have to have a connection to the team, whether that's because your parents rooted for them and they like introduce you to it, yep. and you have these memories of cheering for that team with your with your mom or dad, or it's you know for me, I'm a huge Dolphins fan, and it's because you know I'm a big time Dan Marino fan when I was a kid, and it's because we almost moved into the same neighborhood he lived in, and that like stuck with yeah. me, and I, it was a big deal for me um, as a kid, and like I had you know that, that was. So now as an adult, uh, for a lot of years, I've been a Dolphins fan, which sucked up until this year, which is amazing. <laughs> and, and now I'm like, yeah, you know, for the first time I can watch uh, the uh, the news and see that, you know, watching sports news and ESPN and stuff and seeing that we're not awful. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's so refreshing. Yeah. Um, so, but, you know, the, the conversation around the idea that like this gives orgs an opportunity to connect with kids yeah. in a way that is so meaningful because they will always have that memory of, Oh man, when I was a kid, I played, uh, you know, I played on this uh, apex legends team. Um, and I was on like the dark you know, XP league, dark zero and dark zero won ALGS that year. It was amazing. And, you know, so I've, I've followed them forever. Right. Th those are the type of yeah. um, stories that I think will come out of relationships like this. And, um, you know, and, and having these conversations with uh, with pro orgs has, has been has been a lot of fun because they they get into it and they yeah. see the vision too. So um, I think it's gonna I, I think it's gonna be really successful. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what you guys do, and um, you know, you also in 2022 uh, you ex uh, executed a deal to bring in like the youth franchising juggernaut that is Unleash Brands in as a investor and partner. Uh, yep. Talk to us a little bit about Unleash Brands and, and that partnership. So Unleash Brands is um, doing what like Neighborly um, and you know, Inspire Brands did for other industries. So Neighborly is like uh, a franchising uh, brand platform that owns a bunch of different brands on things that do things at your house, right? right. So if you need something from your house, you call Neighborly and you know one of their their roofing company comes out or whatever. And so um, Unleashed, their vision was they, they were started by guys who were in uh, Urban Air, which is a, uh, it started as a trampoline park and evolved into an indoor adventure park. And, and they're, they're pretty cool. I mean, some of them have like indoor skydiving, yeah. they have go karts. I mean, it's, they're insane. They're the coolest things ever. If they had them when I was a kid, I'd probably spend all day there. <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's really amazing. And so, you know, you had this vision of creating a platform for youth enrichment and they kind of break it down into three worlds. There's like um, play, learn and grow. Mm -hmm. And so I started, they reached out to me really early. I mean, I, I've probably talked to them for over uh, almost a year before we actually did anything. Um, and it, it was, it was great. I mean, they, they had the same vision that I did of like reaching kids and making a difference in their lives and impacting them in a positive way. Um, and you know, they, like, uh, Michael Browning, who's the CEO of Unleashed Brands. Um, he always says kids don't have to wait to be great. Like that's his tagline. Um, and you know, I talked about that with, with our owners in the sense that like, yeah, dude, we, we see that every day, like our kids, you know, they are great and they know they're great. And the way that we build up their confidence and what we do with them is, is phenomenal. Um, so there's a lot of shared vision on 
what we can do to enrich these kids' lives. And so they've bought a bunch of different brands since um, since they started. They own the Little Gym, which is uh, a huge international. I mean, they've got locations as far as like, I think they have some like on Argentina, and oh, wow. like Thailand and stuff. Um, Snapology, which is a STEM brand. Um, they own this really cool one called Class 101, which is, um, it's a collegiate planning franchise. And the owner, the guy who started it, who's now the brand president and CEO is just a phenomenal person. Um, and he really cares about yeah. the kids that he works with and getting them into schools and getting them, you know, scholarships and doing all this great stuff. So it's a really interesting model, but Unleashed is crazy. They're huge. Um, and they continue to grow and they're winning all kinds of accolades in the franchising world and yeah. they're doing it the right way by, um, supporting their franchisees and, you know, so it's it's re really exciting that they were interested in us. Uh, it's been fun. Um, you know, of course, everything has its challenges, um, but it's been fun, um, you know, getting integrated into that program and getting to still, I mean, it's great because we, yeah. we get to retain who we are and why we do it. Yeah, and that's great. I mean, I think like keeping, being able to be XP League and do what you guys are doing and then having that support behind you is, is huge and and you guys obviously had received a ton of other accolades uh since you know forming you now received your stem accreditation um uh you were nominated yeah, yeah you were nominated as a tempest awards watch list uh <laughs> recipient uh you know there's a lot yeah. of really good things you know coming out uh here for xp league and uh talk to us kind of about uh, what what that feels like at the moment oh man it's it's like it's it's great uh, you know it feels uh, it it's really amazing and it's really refreshing and uh i guess validating that we came at esports in a way that we wanted to be authentic and we wanted to really like we we didn't want to just come in and be like oh yeah we're we're going to play competitive video games and we're going to be esports and we're just going to take advantage of the community and you know like you know, kind of play it from that angle. We wanted to get into it, like really get into it, and and do it, like understand what what it means from the grassroots level to yeah. the like. You know, we want to know what what it feels like and what it's like for the streamers and for kids who compete in you know on 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 high school teams or compete into um, academy teams and what the pro uh, what the pro circuits like and what their you know, the different challenges that they face and kind of just looking at it holistically from, you know, we, we, we say esports a lot, but just from competitive gaming yeah. and just looking at it from the entire like competitive gaming um, ecosystem and approaching it from uh, a place where we can honor it and be authentic and um, having them recognize that, that we did that and, um, you know, uh, allowing us to, to be a part of it. I mean, it's, it's a really great community. And if you approach it right, it's unbelievably welcoming and it's a great place to be. Um, and so receiving, um, you know, we were nominated for Tempest Award for, for North American finals, which yep. is really cool. Um, we'll, we'll win it next year. Um, you know, and then, uh, and then getting put on that watch list just is, is such a, phenomenal yeah. validator that like hey man you know they they it's it's you know i i i love you guys but you like me too that's so cool <laughs> feels great i like it yeah and obviously you know we we did the north american finals at full sale which was which was huge um and you know there was watching some of that gameplay i mean so, some of those teams were insane uh oh yeah man yeah. i feel like probably could hang at and they were maybe middle school level and I definitely oh, yeah. think they could have hung in high school and maybe even at the collegiate scene because there were some top talent players there that were were you know yeah. just keeping you, uh, the game and did you catch any of the Rocket League? I did, yeah. The Rock. I was. I obviously I'm a fan of Valorant. You know, I'm terrible at the game, so I like it. I like watching it. So I sp I stuck around for a lot of the Valorant action. I uh, saw yeah. some of the Rocket League as well. Uh, so I'll tell you one of my goals, like I have, I have, I have a list of, of goals that I want to achieve in the next uh, three to five years. And one of them was uh, prove a path to pro um, from XP League. And it was, like you it. know, just, just like one kid to do something 
not i don't it's not for everyone it's not like our mission we right. have no we, we make no claims that like hey come play with us and you guys are gonna go pro you're right. not like you know very few kids are um i do think it'll help some kids get into college yeah. uh and and play a collegiate and i think it'll be Absolutely. great for collegiate uh programs to have kids who have been on teams for years and understand how to be on a team and come into it and like you know so so i'm excited about that but um we achieved that goal way before i ever thought we would and the kids who won nafs uh the rocket league team um that trio has actually been signed by a pro org that's uh, incredible x13 yeah and they compete and uh stay plugged in they compete in the stay plugged in things a yeah. lot and they're if you look at if you look at their uh, stay plugged in like national rankings and point system for rocket league uh our kids are number one that's insane the country yeah so that's huge it, yeah dude it's it, it, it's super cool it's super cool it creates you know it creates yeah. some issues in the sense that like now everybody wants to play for that location but you right know, like <laughs> aau like all of a sudden you know you're people picking up and moving to uh different parts of the country because they want to be on the new sports team in that neighborhood uh doesn't work that way um, you know, we, <laughs> hey we i mean maybe i mean if you if you got the talent and the ability maybe that's how it works and so we'll see yeah <laughs> yeah so um no man it's 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 super cool but you know oh bryonics in the uh in the crowd Bryonic in, called it man chat. he, he shoutcasted it yeah so the uh the 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 franklin um oh man i just drew a blank on what the, <laughs> what the team's name was but anyway the kids from franklin they're they're on x13 now that's awesome and obviously uh, i feel like that could probably mark one of your favorite memories so far of working in in the industry uh so far or do you have other uh, is there another memory uh that comes to mind of of just being like wow what a what what a cool opportunity this is yeah i mean you know that's a cool one that's not i mean i i wouldn't even put that in top 10 of the like amazing things that like you know i look at as like the the, the things that stand out to me as the memories that i'll take with me on on wow this is cool and we yeah. did something great um you know we share a mutual friend uh harrison who yep. i mean dude that that's that's a cool thing that we did right yeah. so and that that's a cool thing that we have i mean we've got a kid who um participates on one of our leagues uh and plays on a team and he is um you know constantly battling leukemia and he has ups and downs and he's been in and out of i mean phenomenal kid an unbelievable will yeah. um you know he's been in hospice and then out of hospice i mean fought his way out of hospice it's just like just i mean really moving and he played in north american finals remotely and they came in second Insane. and that was like uh, you know anybody who's around me saw that I, I broke down i mean oh, yeah. i had to leave the room because i was just bawling um when they won their last round leading them into second because he, he clutched the game yep. and i was just thinking dude this kid is sitting at home in dallas on oxygen and he just clutched for his team and you know like how, like how are we able to do this for yeah. people like how does this work why it I mean, it's amazing yeah. it, it was and and you know that'll stick with me forever and that actually led us to partnering with the leukemia lymphoma society um and actually dark zero is involved in that as well um and we're trying to offer this up for we want to make this i mean we're, we're eventually going to look for a brand partners to sponsor this and to really build it out because yeah. there's a lot of kids that are immunocompromised that yep. don't get to hang out with their friends and don't get to have normal experiences this allows it i mean this like you know they get to hang out and play on a team with a coach with kids and like makes their life a little less shitty for a few yeah. hours yeah absolutely i mean I, and and that's i think one of the beauties of esports and, and competitive gaming and just yeah. gaming in general is that uh, i would say 99.9 percent .9 of the people they just want to belong you know yeah they want to be a yeah, part of something and, and and gaming is that right and that gives uh, so many opportunities to so many people um that you know you you may never have met before but you did because of gaming, right? And that yeah. that's such a cool, um, you know, part of, of this industry and what what that does, um, you know, that really that really can change, you know, lives and and uh, you know bring you know that positivity back into the world, which is which is really important, you know, especially at a time like now. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Um, it's uh, our you know we we uh, we live by the good luck have fun mentality yep. with our kids, right? You know, you you talk and chat, it's 
GGs and good luck, have fun, and everything has to be positive. And you know, we 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 don't allow any like BMing in the community. And um, I like to think that we're building a community that's going to impact esports uh, and gaming, competitive gaming, and the multiplayer games. Uh, in a in a like, in, like we're gonna have an impact on it for years to come yeah. because kids that come out of our program they're you know they're not going to be toxic and they're going to approach it differently and so you know yep. we're doing our a little bit to to change the the community where you know sometimes it's it's not as fun and as inclusive as it should be yeah if you've ever if you've ever heard me talk on a panel before one of the things that i've saying been saying for at least the last like four years five years is um you know the the thing that i'm most excited about is to watch the future of the kids that are currently in middle school playing in an organized fashion or in high school that are in an organized fashion and, and watching them work their way through that into the world of the collegiate esports space because these are going to be not only the probably top talent that you'll see from a competitive standpoint, um, yeah. but they're going to be like the most well rounded esports players uh, that we've ever had because A, yeah. they can be coached. You know, a lot yeah. of people come to the table and they've never had a coach for esports before. And that can be a challenge to get over, you know, and get through. Uh, but if they've gone through this system of competitive, uh, you know, play like what you guys are doing and, and coaching in uh, XP League, I mean, it really opens the door for them to understand, hey, um, you know, toxicity isn't something that we want to embrace. We are here to have fun and be competitive, be a sportsman like that. That's a huge part of that journey. And I for think sure. as these things go on and as those leagues continue to develop, you know, by the time uh, that those kids are leaving high school, they're looking at you know potential you know opportunities for scholarships for school and college and yeah and to play video games and that's like the coolest thing to say in the world you know like, no i know it's it's <laughs> it's it's unreal it's unreal and and you know when you talk to parents about this they'll say things like can you really like play video games in college and get a scholarship and mm -hmm. it's like yeah dude like a lot of them and yeah. it's not you're not getting a full ride um in in almost all cases but you'll get something and yeah. you know geez man getting money to go to a school to play a video game that you love yeah i mean and that's be part that's, of something dude that's 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 amazing i mean if i if th there's a couple of things that i hear a lot when i tell the story of what we do um when i'm talking to you collegiate programs it's always man i wish our kids did that because it's so hard yeah we always get these kids who have never been on a team before yep. and they don't understand team dynamic and we have forfeits and we have these issues uh the other thing i hear is oh, i wish they had this when i was younger <laughs> yeah, i mean that's that's probably the most common thing that we hear i mean and, and even like i mean uh i was talking to like a 19 year old uh pro the other day who, who was you know said the same thing he's like man I wish they had that when I was younger. It's like, well, you were actually competing for money and you went pro at 16. So, I mean, you sort of had it, but you, got, okay. you did it on your own. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that would have been cool to have you doing that too. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, man. I just, I, 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 I love it. I love what we're doing. I love the industry. I love the impact this has yeah. on kids, the confidence it builds, the relationships it builds. I mean, I see it at home with my kids I mean, my son, um, is you know so, so actually my youngest um they spend probably more time online and interacting in the gaming world right. than they do like with other kids like hanging out because yeah. um they have a lot of anxiety and things like that and it kind of makes a safe space for them to feel you know to to feel at home and to feel who they are yeah. um and it, it's i mean that, that's awesome he's not you know they're they're not competitive they don't get on there to like you know they're playing be the best right yeah i mean they're, they're playing like genshin impact or right. roblox or things like that exactly but it's their place and yeah. they get to be who they want to be um you know but and they do it in a positive way where um you know you sometimes you get some kids who act toxic because they use that avatar as kind of a mask of who they are yeah. Uh, and they get to be their worst self. And so one of the like things I think about the XP League is um, we build character, not avatars. We're trying to take that anonymity away from yep. the kids. You can be in this space and you can be who you are and 
embrace it because that's how you're going to make genuine relationships and that's how you're going to make genuine connections in the space and so don't be afraid to be who you are um you know it, it, be real in in your gaming and online and be real in the real world yep. um and so one of the things that we talk about a lot with our kids um in xp league is is that you have to respect the game and respect your opponents and realize that you, when you're playing somebody it's not you're, you're not just playing a character on a screen you're playing against another kid sitting yeah. in a chair in front of a monitor in front of a keyboard in front of a mouse who's just like you yeah. and the things that you say to him or, or her or them uh affects them the same way that it would if it was directed at you so you know you want to take that in and think about it yeah absolutely yeah and i think that's that you know it's such an important piece of the the puzzle as as these kids get older and get out into the world you know leading with those types of you know ideas i think it's going to be you know, uh, a great future for them and, and obviously their, their journey in esports. But, um, uh, obviously before we go, I feel like we could, we could talk all night, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I do want to give you some time to a first, uh, you know, to give some shout outs and, and, and let people know where they can find you, um, sure. before we have a couple last minute questions. So go ahead. Where, where can people find you? How, how should they get in touch with you? Yeah. So, um, I'm on, uh, so, so me personally, uh, you know, twitch.tv CEO grind. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, at Melamed J. Um, XP league is at XP league on Twitter. We're XP league.gg. Um, we have a, a location map finder on there. So if you know some kids, um, you know, hop on there and check it out and see uh, where we're where we're at so you can refer them and get them on a team um, we do have virtual programs so if we're not where you are yet reach out anyway we'll, we'll hook you up and get you playing um you know there's a there's 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 a home or a team for every yeah. esports athlete perfect uh we got one uh we got one um question one last question from chat and that comes from phoenix nap uh, what is the goal? Uh, what is a goal that you have for XP League? Uh, the goal that I have for XP League is for XP League to be the brand of youth esports. I want XP League to be thought of the same way that Little League is thought of. Um, and, um, you know, I want kids who participate in XP League to, um, to be recognized as something special. Um, I want people who coach and work with XP League to be recognized as something special. Um, I, I like to equate it to uh, Eagle Scouts. I was not a Boy Scout. I was never in scouting, but I know what an Eagle Scout is and yeah. I know what it means and I know what they go through. And so I want um, XP League athletes, you know, when they apply for, for college or want to play on a, on a collegiate team, um, for the recruiter or the uh, esports director to look at me like, oh man, this kid was on XP League, man. Yeah, dude, we we need one of those guys. They're they're good. They know they 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 know how to be a teammate. They know how to support it. And they know how to yeah. stay positive. Um, and you know, and for our coaches who sometimes are volunteers, uh, get certified and work with kids, and all of a sudden, hey man, I really love this. Yeah. I want to I want to be an esports coach. I'm going to apply. I'm going to apply to to full sail to work with uh with the Armada. And, you know, you get their resume and you look at him and oh, yeah, dude, this guy coached a couple of XP League yeah. teams. He knows, he knows what he's doing. He knows, he knows how to interact with these guys. Um, so that's 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 my goal. And, you know, I want to, uh, in five years, I want to have affected, um, you know, 50,000 kids. Yeah. So it's a big goal. But with That's huge. Yeah, and, and I think you guys are well on your way um, and, and uh, you know, definitely going to be able to, to make that happen as it continues to grow. Thanks, man. Awesome, Jay. Well, thank you so much for being here. Um, we will see you next time on Have Game Will Travel. Thanks for hanging out with us, and have a great rest of your evening.